right first. Uh, what is Cyrus, by the way? This is just to show you that it is something specific. Um, and this is a way to make it clearer why or, or why there could be a link with cooking. So Cyrus, you can read. Uh, did you read already? No, sorry, I should have killed the other. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, because some, sometimes when the, the, the lecturer is speaking, people cannot think this is easy. So, yeah. 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 so, yeah. yeah. so scientists are better to, to go through the world and they, they see something looking at phenomena. Phenomena, for example, the zebra are stripes, you see, this guy in the front is not a zebra because he don't have stripes. <laughs> and, and, and the question is, why do zebra have stripes and why do so we have stripes. This is the question. We could have stripes, by the way. And that, no. So there is a question. So scientists are better to look at this kind of phenomena. Why is there a mountain somewhere? Why is there a sea? Why, why is the sky blue? The sky is not red. The sky is not yellow. The sky is not green. The sky is blue. Why? So we are better. Uh, not much, but uh, anyway. And I know that it is in French, but it's just to show you that I do the correct position. Uh, is, very rarely, you know, can, don't care the text. I mean, only one sentence is important. Galileo Galilei said, he was the creator of science. He said, you have to prefer experiment to anything. You can make the dozens of reasonings that experiment first. This is the basic of science. But the second, the second part is, uh, we, we have to consider that the world is written in mathematical language. So this is why, if you see some discourse or text with no equations, it's not science, probably. And it's why, if you love equations that I do, I mean, uh, I will take the plane this evening, during the, during the plane, I will finally have time to calculate. It's much better than, than looking at the TV at the baseball match. I hate this kind of thing, so I want to be quiet with my calculation and questions in front of me. It's a big pleasure. So this is science. Okay? So now, uh, Baker was an, an English uh, father of modern science. He, he said you have to measure and measure and measure and measure. And this is why I'm so happy to have seen this kind of tools that I'm not going to use today. Balance, this is the, the main scientific tool very important for the, 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 the creation of modern science. Okay. So now, science has a method, and this method is very specific. For example, when someone tells me something, I say, no, it's probably wrong. So this is why scientists are awful people. Many that you would say something to me, you would say, no, no, probably wrong. No, 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 it's probably wrong. No, 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 and we have a person, and this person is responsible for this behavior. It's very funny. Imagine that you, you look at the bluest of the sky and you say, why is the sky blue? Okay. So you decide to make a scientific study. What you have to do? First you observe in blue. Okay. Now, sorry, now you measure with any kind of tool and you get a lot of data. And in my computer, on my screen, I have data full level. Of course, it's very difficult to swallow. So we took them into laws, which are synthetic, and it's easier. Whenever the law is not the end of the story, we want to understand why the sky blue. So we make a theory. A theory is an explanation. For example, we would say, okay, the light, the white light of the sun is coming on the air molecule, for example, the dinitrogen, and the dinitrogen, some part of the light is transmitted. And the other part is reflected this way, so it's reflected this way. And finally, because the wavelength is the same, in the same direction, it's blue. This is a theory. And is it true? The answer is no, because we cannot demonstrate a theory in science. The only thing that we can say is that I have a theory, I make a prediction, and now I make an experiment in order to refute the theory. So science does not demonstrate, demonstrate anything. And this is why, imagine you tell me something, I would say, oh, this is a theory, so how do you throw? And this is the day of your life. Instead of distributing some knowledge, 
scientific research in all Western or this part of the world, how is it home? And this is why it's so apparent. There are millions of, of questions. Now, uh, just to summarize, so observation, data, laws, theory, prediction, etc. Very good. And because it's a very clear method, it's very easy to do science. And in 1980, I, I wanted to know why the Sufi experiment. Okay? So, of course, I applied this, this study. So, first, I made the Sufi, which is very good for that. Very good. <laughs> At that time, it was written in the, uh, the Labo Gastronomic that Sufi expanded because of the air bubble expand. Okay, This is the theory. Is it true? And I apply this formula, P equality, which is a very simple for physics. I mean, it's the easiest. Okay. So you multiply the pressure by the volume, and then you have the temperature at the end. And you calculate the space spent by 30%. But the chef can make 200%. So it means that the theory went wrong, which was obvious because all theories are wrong. So the question was, how was it wrong? At that time, we did not. So what I did, I measured the pressure, this is the upper curve, here's the pointer, no, there's no pointer. So you see the upper curve, and I measured the temperature, uh, and finally I make a big discovery, souffle, excellent, because water evaporates. At that time it was crazy, crazy new. Can you say that in English? Crazy new? Okay, pardon. You know when English is poor, so uh, um, and it was a, a, a good start. At that time, I published in an argument to a new paper. I did an experiment because uh, three star chefs had written souffle expand better when the egg whites are very firm, and another one said souffle uh, expand better when the egg whites are not firm. So, what should we do? I mean, three star chefs, you know, and they give a, 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 a contradictory theory. What you do? And you have to say that at the bottom, on the right, the, the souffle is bigger because the egg whites were firmer. And we know and that's all right. But the big question is during this experiment, and that's what we do the balance, always the balance. And when you, you, you measure the mass of the souffle before and after cooking, you recognize that you lose 10 grams for 100 gram of souffle. So 100 gram is a small gap like this, so you have a souffle 100 gram, you, you measure the mass before, after, and you lose 10 grams. But, because we know now that the souffle is fine because of water evaporation, the 10 grams which are lost the water, okay, 1 gram of water makes 1 liter of steam. So 10 grams make 10 liters. So, Obviously, the new theory was wrong, because we, we don't get 10 liters. Why? And the answer is very easy, because you see at the surface of the souffle, when you look through the oven, you see bubbles and bubbles and bubbles and bubbles, which is steam that escapes through the surface. And then I propose to Pierre, when I say Pierre, it's very okay? Uh, okay. There is no other chef in the world. Um, he's my friend. <laughs> So, 
is this is where the whole new study. Uh, of course, when you make a Durham proper, I don't know if you know Durham proper and this sort of thing, it's pancake dough that you put in a small cup and you look it like a pan layer or something, and then you get stuff, and there is no whipped egg whites inside. You just add water, the body, and the other, and the, and the, and the, and the mold, the mold, the mold, the mold is, is uh, metallic because then you increase the vaporization of water. So, you see, this is just because we have this scientific, uh, let's say, method, and this method, even if you are not very smart, the method is so smart that it makes you successful. So, this is a good, I would say that it is a good method. And in 1998, in March, with my old friend Nicolas Fiorti, we created a new discipline. At that time, we called it molecular optical gastronomy, but it was too long, so I shortened it to the molecular gastronomy. It's easier. So you see, molecular gastronomy is scientific research. It has nothing to do with the field. Okay? But at that time, there was a problem because we, we made a, a, a meeting and we invited a chef because we wanted to study the real phenomena, not the phenomena that you, you can make in the kitchen ourselves because we are a chef. So you see some arrows from the chef, um, and the press was there, the journalists were there, and they said, oh, okay, chef, do molecular gastronomy. But no, they were invited just because we wanted to see the real phenomena. And it was the beginning of the great confusion, and I apologize for the great confusion. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's not entirely my fault, but also the press. See? Beware the press. I hope that's not going to be scared. Okay, they are the ambassadors of the public. So it means that if the press does not understand fully what we say, the public does not understand this. So we have to be more clear. Okay? And this is difficult to be clear. So please, a great applause for your teacher. All day long, in spite of lazy students. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so now, uh, just what we are doing, so MG is what you are studying, and this is a small part within two sciences uh, with clinical chemistry, with applications in what we call formulation. Okay. Now, uh, the, the, I'm always starting to the easiest. What is, what is food? Is there any difference between uh, food and dishes? No, you have to consider the question. So, food, apparently, I, I would have said some time ago that the whole carrot in the field is not food, except that they contain some nutrients. So, perhaps we should call them food. And perhaps the, the word animal or food is not the same. So, uh, I, I don't know exactly. But if the question is worth being given. Now, this is a crazy result that was not fully published. The publication is under review. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful story. One morning, I wanted to see an onion with MRI. You see, MRI is a machine that you put your body to recognize the cancer. So I, I bought an onion, I took my small knife, I cut the onion into four, I went to a friend who had an MRI machine, I said, can you please make me a picture of that? So the price of this picture is about $10,000. Uh, as a rule, the time of the guy, the machine, the electricity, everything. And this is the result, uh, and we now have a, a result. The, an onion is made of scales. You see them. Uh, this result costs $10,000. Should I do that? Uh, and the answer is yes. First of all, because uh, what you can see here, <coughs> there are small black dots. Okay? And these dots are the channels through which the sap is going onto the leaves and back into the roots. And this is my, what I wanted to see. And there is a, dis a discovery in this picture. You see the, oh, sorry. The channels are generally on the wrong inner side of the scales. It was not published before. It's a, it's a discovery. Is it useful for books? Probably. If you 
if you are smart enough to put some intelligence into the result. The, the result doesn't tell you it's a result. And now, imagine that I were a chef, I would say, okay, but if the, there are two kinds of channels, when you take the sap from the soil to the leaves, the sap is water plus mineral source. Okay. When you go back to the roots, the sap is water plus sucrose, glucose, fructose, and amino acids. And they have a taste. So imagine that you take a, a scale of water, you put it this way, and you cut transversely, probably you would have a different taste than the other part of the normal. Is it useful? I don't know. But there is a possibility of, of doing something new. But well, the chef knows very well that you can't, for example, the center has nothing to do with the, the other side. And there is another result that we made recently. We measure the quantity of glucose to cause in any part of carbon. I'm not sure that we have I don't have time. What the most exciting result of this picture, another tens of dollars, is the white part here. It was completely unconnected. So why is this white part? Then, when I go to understand, I'm very happy because there's the possibility of discovery. So the next day, I took another onion. But this day, I took a scalpel. I went again with my friend, I took ten thousand dollars. I cut the onion into four, and we left it to the second picture. And the second picture, we see the scale, okay? Again, we see the... the the end of the frame, which are the, the tubes. But there is no white part. And now we demonstrated that the size of the plane is proportional to this white part. What does it mean? It means that if you have a large knife, you trigger a lot of chemical processes, and then you make the wrong part of the apple, avocado, mushroom, and so on, peas. You change the nutrients, you change the taste. So, depending on the blade that you are using in your life, you get a completely different result. And in one of my seminars, we took an apple, we had two kinds of knives, ceramic blade, ordinary blade, we cut the apple, triangular test, and sensory test, and we were able to make the difference. So, please have very good knives. This is not a science. It was a completely unpredictable. Nobody, of course, it's better to cut with a good knife, but it is changing the taste. And for an apple, it's not so important. But for the salad of carrots, the julienne, the whole part can be destroyed, it can be damaged by the right knife. So in this kind of thing, you need a very good knife. And with the, the industrial machine, there are sometimes blades for making your blood sausage or terrine or something. And I'm very happy to tell you that I've been part of a jury uh, for judging these products, today I see that the trades are not good enough and the result is poor. So, sharpening a knife is something that is very important. Okay. Now, uh, I show you pictures of the past. Uh, I, I invite you to the museum. Okay? So now we, we, we share a visit of the museum. So we keep the lab, we go to the museum, so you see there is a guy with a casket or something. You know? um, you pay your ticket or something. Uh, in 1980, uh, I was looking at my lab at home, at the lab at home, and I said, wow, there are plenty of hardware that we can use in the kitchen. Because, you look, uh, when you have a, a whisk, a whisk is almost the middle age. When you, because a whisk, where is it from? Whipping heads? Yeah. Whipping heads. Uh, let's whip heads. Let's whip eggs of the future. Uh, I, I want to make uh, a whipped egg white. Okay. I don't have whipped egg white, but I know that an egg white is 90% uh, uh, water. Okay. So one, two, two three, 27 now. Okay. So, I'll add it. Now I need the protein. So these are proteins, okay? Some proteins, okay? And now uh, we have the egg whites. I don't have eggs, of course. We are living in the 21st century, not in the Middle Age. So. No, no, it's obvious. The eggs can break, uh, they are full of microorganisms, they are very bad. 
not so full because the, the, the cocaine uses him and uses him with a very good antibacterial agent. Anyway, they can break. And you can, you can store them for a long time like this way. You can store the powder forever, you don't need a fish. Okay. Now you want to make a, a wheat payment. Generally, in cooking, it is said, okay, you have to whip the bread. But why? Because what you need first is a goal. I mean, imagine that you are in Hyde Park and you want to go to New York. If you don't know that you want to go to New York, perhaps you will come to Boston. So you need to know the goal first, always. So what is the goal of a Buff Wellington? I don't know. What is the goal of a Custard? I'm not sure. What is the goal of the wheat table? Okay. This has been defined first. So imagine that the wheat table is a foam, which means air bubbles or air bubbles. Any gas, it will be helium, because if you whip uh, egg white with helium, when you eat it, you will think like this. It's a very, very experiment if you never had it before. Just press some helium, and you will think like this. So, for one, this snake could be a good thing to make some. We need to make a foam. So, we think that we have to put them in. Ever. Is this too late or dangerous? I'm sure. Because what I need is to put them in. So, let's use it in a way. Let's use it, but look, there is something worse in life. Look at this item. It works. It's, it's this guy is very friendly, smiling, first of all, he's is, is brilliant. Except, oh, it's crazy. I, I, I learned, I'm lending the spoon and he takes it. Why? I didn't ask him anything. Thank you. 
Ja, ich glaube,